Hey there everyone, I'm here today with Coach Ant and he's going to be helping me show you guys some of the details of our sliding collar choke. Today we're going to be starting to get into our gi choke chapter and throughout our gi choke we're going to be looking at primarily three, vari three or variations of three different chokes. Uh, the sliding collar choke, the cross choke, and the Ezekiel choke we'll be looking at these chokes throughout the next month or so. Uh, we're going to start off with the sliding collar choke because it is, I believe, one of the highest uh, rates of submission, or it accounts for one of the highest rates of submission in gi, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu matches and gi matches. Once you get to back control, sometimes it can, be, it can be hard to get your entire forearm underneath the neck to get to a rear naked choke. But in the gi, the collar is so thin that it's relatively easy to get the collar underneath the neck that provided you don't know what you're doing and that's what you're going to be learning how to do today. Okay. Then once we have the choking grip set, once we go over the details of the choking grip, I'll show you guys various places you can put the control hand, the second grip for, mac, uh, for finishing options. We'll talk about getting a strong angle casting your leg over the shoulder to provide maximum power, you'll see that later. And then we'll talk about how to set up the choke and get into it from various positions. First, let's start with just some back control basics, since we're starting to revisit back control once again. So I'm going to have to hands back. I'm here on his back, and we're on our side. So, regarding the lower body, I could have two symmetrical hooks. This is a fair, this is a fairly weak form of control that can be easily escaped, but it gets you points in jiu-jitsu. Putting my two hooks in gives me four points if I can hold this for three seconds. Going a step further for control, we can go to a post rear mount, where I post my top foot on the hip, and I bring my bottom hook nice and high, trying to touch my right foot to my left leg to close the circle around his body. Now it's going to be harder for Ant to jump over my bottom hook because my bottom hook is so high and I can use my left leg to put weight over his hip so it's harder for him to move his hips. The third option, my favorite, is a full body triangle where I take my bottom ankle high and I put it in the pocket of my top knee. And then I take my top knee and I hook my foot right here behind his leg or behind his hips. Okay, so we have a full body triangle. These are, the, these are the three main options for lower body control. Hooks, posture amount, body triangle. Upper body, we always want to have the head trap. I want my choking arm and my head on opposite sides of Ant's head. If Ant does anything to, to deviate from that, if he moves his head to the other side of my head, I will no longer be able to choke him. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I realize, stay down, I realize that I'm starting to lose alignment. So the first thing I'm going to do is rather than think about choking him, is I'm going to physically move him back into the position I want him, back into the head trap. Okay? A second element is that when I'm going to get my seatbelt control, this under over control, I want my underarm to cover my choking arm. My control hand covers the choking hand. If it's the other way around, when Ant goes up to defend, he has the important arm. He has the arm I need to choke him. But when I put my control hand over my choking hand, when he goes to grab my hand, that leaves the, the important arm, the choking arm, free to continue attacking the neck. So when we lock our seat though, when we lock our hands together, Let's put the choking hand on bottom, and let's hide and protect our choking hand with our control hand. So those are our various control elements of back control. This is a very brief introduction or a review. Now, let's get into setting the choking grip. Understand that the effectiveness, the effectiveness of your choke comes down to the effectiveness of your grip. If you have a crappy grip, 
um, say you know whatever. I, that's hard to get under the under the chin, and it's going to put undue stress in the fingers. So everything starts with a good grip, and that's true pretty much in all of jujitsu. Jujitsu is about control, so I need to be able to grab this guy and control him. If the way I grab him is inefficient, the way I'm going to be able to control him as we work our way forward is going to be deficient as well. If I want to be able to control him as well as possible, and if I want to be able to execute things as well as possible, I want my first contact to be as efficient as possible, to be as high quality as possible. So let's go into quite a bit of detail on setting a strong choking grip for the bow choke, or for the sliding collar choke, and why it works. And I'm going to have you go up to the middle of the mat here. Let's go a little closer. So from this position, I'm actually just going to stay here on my knees while we talk through this, because we're going to be here for a little while talking about the details of the choke. Okay. For now, I'm just going to have Ant's hands out of the way. Understand he would be defending, he'd be reaching up and defending, but I also have means to trap the arms, and we're going to talk about this later, where when I'm here, one of the options that I have is to first trap my opponent's defensive arms, and then I can start setting my choking grips. Okay. For now, Ant is just going to keep his hands on his knees. So I'm here with the seatbelt. I have the head trap in place. My support arm, my control arm is covering the choking hand and we're ready to go. Now, when I want to set my choking grip, one of the first things I use is a two-on-one lapel feed where I use my control hand to help feed and pass a grip to my choking hand. If I come up with my choking hand and I just grab the lapel, there's usually going to be a lot of slack in the lapel and it's usually going to be not a great grip. Oftentimes the key is going to be folded up in funny ways when they're rolling, right? So I reach over and just grab whatever. It's usually going to be a suboptimal grip. And in truth, the first grip you grab is usually going to be suboptimal anyway. So we're going to need to use the biting method. We'll come back to that later. But remember that the biting method when we, when we fix up our grip. So I first use a two-on-one. I use a two-on-one lapel feed. Opening the hand here, opening the lapel, feeding his lapel to my right hand. When I feed the lapel into my right hand, I want the edge of the lapel facing into his neck, and I want to be able to take his lapel and lay it flat against his chest. That's going to come into play later when we're going to look to penetrate the lapel underneath the chin. So, control hand opens, I feed the edge of the lapel into the webbing of the thumb, I wrap my fingers around the edge of the lapel so that I get this flat rope sitting in my hand as one flat strand, one flat piece. And I want it bunched up. Okay. Now, when I set this grip, we're going to use something called the biting method. If I just open and I grab the first grip I get, it'll often be a little suboptimal. Okay. Um, the same way when you go to pick up anything, like off the counter, you go to grab anything, the first grip you get when you grab something up is usually not a great grip that you're going to use to hold on to this thing for long periods of time. Rather, it's usually a transitory grip. You usually pick something up, and then there'll be a slight adjustment where you fix your grip to have an optimal grip. Think about when you grab a glass out of the counter. You grab, you wrap, you wrap your fingers around it, and then you might push it deeper into your hand. Okay, for, for example, or you might rotate a little bit to, to optimize your grip. Same thing when you're making grips in jujitsu, uh, especially on the clothing. When I'm here, I open up the lapel, I go to grab my first grip. The first grip is usually not great, so I'm going to bite multiple times until I get the perfect grip that I want, a grip that I can completely hang off of, and that's going to be strong and robust, and I'm going to be able to hold for the duration of the technique. Okay, so we use the biting method to make sure we get a good, strong grip set. Okay. As I'm setting my grip, I don't want to be too low on the lapel. Okay, he's gonna have his chin tucked. Okay, he's not gonna be letting me get the grip. I don't want to be grabbing down here. And and now you see that the that the lapel can't be used very well. This isn't gonna get underneath the chin. So I hit my biting method. I want my index knuckle to be past the point of his chin. If I'm grabbing like so, 
so that the lapel is wrapping around the neck, it's gonna be really hard to set the lapel around the chin. So when he tucks his chin to the chest and I'm setting my grip using the two on one lapel feed and using the biting method, I wanna to continue to bite until I can see my index knuckle here, my index knuckle on this side of his chin. Okay, so he's tucking two on one. I feed it with the edge of the lapel into the web of my thumb. I use the biting method to fix up a good grip, getting the lapel flat to his chest and getting the edge of the lapel facing the neck. Okay, we're getting everything set and now we're, we're just about ready to go. One more thing that I'm gonna do before we actually penetrate the neck here is I'm gonna to convert to a three finger grip. If I use my whole hand here and as I start to put the choke on, there's gonna be stress against my fingers. If the pinky knuckle here, the pinky is the finger that's taking the brunt of the stress, oftentimes that will cause so much undue stress to the pinky that you would rather let go of the choke or alleviate the grip than break your own finger trying to force the choke. So when I set my grip, I'll use what's called a three finger grip, where I will take my pinky and I will either let it hang like so, so the pinky's not involved in the strangle grip. Or, what I prefer is to take my pinky and I hide it inside the lapel. Now the reason I prefer that is if I grab three fingers and I just kind of let my pinky hang and I only uh, squeeze with three fingers, I feel like all my fingers aren't squeezing and working together and I feel like my grip is a little compromised. So I don't like letting my pinky hang open for that reason. Another reason is as I set my choking hand and my opponent goes to defend, he might grab my pinky and as he starts peeling things away, that pinky is something for him to grab onto. Now, you should grab a single finger in jiu-jitsu. In fact, there's rules against it, both in the sport and in our academy, but it does happen, right? People are getting choked, they don't want to be choked, they're clawing at whatever they can claw to, to, get their, to get the hand away from the neck, and they might reach up, they might hook just the pinky and pull the hand away using just the pinky. Go ahead and demonstrate. So I'm here, he might just grab the pinky, pull everything away, and you know, that's no good. So, I set my grip. Don't grab pinkies, by the way. I'm not encouraging you to do that. Don't do that. I'm just saying sometimes people do, but please don't. Anyway, so I'm here. I put the lapel flat against the chest. Okay, I'm going to take my pinky, and I hide my pinky inside. Now I can still squeeze all my fingers together. Okay, so I squeeze here. Pinky goes, I can still squeeze my entire fist together. My pinky can still squeeze too, but my pinky's not going to take any stress when I go to finish the choke. My pinky is completely unaffected by the, the tension for the choke, okay? So now that we've got all those things down, let's talk about how do we get this under the chin. Why are we doing all these details? It's gonna help us use the wrist flick, and it's gonna help us set the choke and grip. So I get, once again, edge of the lapel into the web of the thumb, biting method, fixing up multiple grips to, until I get the one that satisfies me, the one I can work with. I take my pinky, I hide it in behind his lapel. I can physically see my knuckles, so I know I'm deep enough with my, with my knuckles here. His chin is tucked. He doesn't want me to get into the choke. Now here's the beautiful part. With this lapel set flat against the chest and the edge of the lapel facing into the jaw, into the jaw he's going to tuck his chin tightly, and I can't pull the, pull the lapel up, but what I can do is what's called a wrist flick. I'm going to pull, getting the edge of the lapel right next to the neck, or I'm sorry, right next to the point of his chin. And now watch, I'm gonna flex my wrist forward and I'm gonna use my wrist to push his jaw over the lapel. And now I'm gonna pull my right elbow back to my hip and that's gonna set the lapel underneath the neck. Okay, so again, I'm here. I have the arms taken out of the way. I use a two-on-one lapel feed, putting the lapel flat against my thumb so the edge is in the web of the thumb. I use the biting method, making sure my index knuckle is visible to me. And then I take my weak pinky finger and I put it behind the lapel so it doesn't take any of the stress of the choke. Ant is tucking his chin. He doesn't want to be choked right now. So we use what we call the wrist flick. He keeps that chin tucked to his chest. I place the edge of the lapel 
right at the point of the chin. It's knocking on the door, ready to get in. And now I'm gonna flex my wrist forward like I'm slowing down on a motorcycle. And I'm using this part of my wrist to physically push his jaw over the edge of the lapel and then I'm gonna snap everything back in place here. So it'll look like this when done in kind of more of a real time where here he's got that chin set down. I go push and I snap it. Okay, one more time. I push and I snap the lapel in. Okay, and then we're ready to go to work with the choke. Now, let's start talking about the control hand. Once I get the, the choking grip set, I should, I should actually say before I get the choking grip set, what I would do is I, biting method, index knuckle visible, pinky behind, and now I'd probably start uh, looking to set my control hand right away. One of my, my favorite positions for the control hand is the opposite lapel, okay? Because this allows me to take the slack out of the jacket. Notice when I pull down on one side of the jacket, the other side will raise and move. So when I anchor one side of the lapel down, that takes all the slack out of the lapel. So it makes for a fine choking instrument, okay? Alternatively, another option for my control hand is his wrist. I have one arm trapped, hopefully with my legs, and as I go to set my control hand, I can also use this grip. So now he has no hands to finish, and now I can once again apply the choke just using this grip right here, using the wrist grip, and we'll talk about that. Finally, the leg. We can either hook the leg, elbow deep, with a bent leg. We can hook the leg elbow deep, coming out and extending the leg. Or we can physically grab the gi pants here, right around the knee, okay? Just above the knee, like so. So those three positions, three great positions for your control hand once you've set your, your choking grip. My, fur, my favorite, my personal favorite, and what I think is the strongest, is the opposite lapel. Okay, it's simple. It allows me to keep hugging him to me. I don't give up any control. It's, it's one of the best there is. Also very good is the wrist grip because he's gonna be looking to, to use his hand to defend. I bring the hand out of the way and now we can apply the choke from here, number two. And the third option is the leg, either grabbing the knee pants like so or grabbing the whole leg here, either at the knee with my, by using my elbow at his knee or using my elbow out at his ankle. So those are the very various options for your control hand, your control grip. Now let's talk about actually applying the choke and getting power um, from the legs and the hips. Okay. So we're gonna be, we're gonna be the best way angle to shoot this. We're gonna have to do multiple angles for this, I'm sure. Let's do let's do for our control side first, and so let me take you back. So we'll start from this side. We'll probably have to rotate. Okay. Again, I generally prefer to do some straight jacket grip fighting here and to trap his arms before I get ready to set my chokes. Okay, that's what I always prefer. Um, you don't have to. You can do this sometimes without setting the straight jacket, but that's what I prefer to do. I'll show this sometimes with the straight jacket, sometimes without it. Okay. So here I initially set the straight jacket. I'm going to grab his lapel. He's obviously tucking his chin, right? I'm grabbing his lapel, and I'm going to release his primary defensive hand so I can go into a two-on-one lapel feed with the hand out of the way. So I grab, I cinch up, tightening up in the lapel, making sure 
The lapel is flat against his chest, making sure the edge of the lapel facing it faces in toward his neck. From here, I've used the biting method to secure a good grip. With my index knuckle visible to me, with my index knuckle past the point of his chin. I'm going to take my pinky and I'm going to hide it so it is not a liability to me, so it doesn't actually put any undue stress onto my, onto my grip. Now from here, I'm going to set my control hand here on the lapel, taking the slack out. Ant's going to tuck his chin, and I'm going to use the wrist flick to set the lapel underneath the neck. Now we're ready to get to the cross back position. To get to the cross back position, I step on the top hip here so I can cast my leg across the body. My right leg is going to open, and I'm going to use my two grips to pull him square onto my body. So look at how I'm rolling straight onto my back. I go from my left side, everything straightens, and I put him on his back like so. Now my right leg is going to open, and I'm going to get my right leg over the shoulder as I sit up. And then we come up to this good position here, this fine finishing position. From this finishing position, I'm just going to start to straighten my left arm pulling the slack out of his jacket as I lead my weight off my choking arm here. I could even cross my ankles here if I wanted to. Let's show from another ankle now. So we're here. I do the two on one lapel feet. And I set a good choking grip with the fighting method. I set my control hand, I'm setting it on the lapel. I use a wrist flip to set the, the choke. And now here's where we start to go to work. I'm going to sort of roll on my back, using my hands to pull hands kind of square onto me. I open my right leg, I open my right knee, and I let him fall between my two knees. Notice that my right leg now is behind his head but over and in front of his bottom shoulder. From here, I do typically prefer to cross my ankles so I have a set of closed wedges around his head and shoulders. Now from here, my left hand takes all the slack, and actually, I'll be honest, I should have done this before. Uh, I should have done this back when I did the wrist flick. I should have taken the slack out. We take the slack out, and now I'm going to hang my body weight off of my right hand as I lean back and I apply the, the choke with my body weight hanging and my legs straightening, scissoring, and pressing him into the choke. So I have this grip here. I straighten, lean back, and we get the choke on right there. Okay. Back to this, the point that I just made. When I'm setting my choke here, and I set my control hand, this is where I'm already taking the slack out. Okay, so he's tucking his chin. I'm taking the slack out here. I use the wrist flick, and I start setting my uh, the little pals tightly around the neck here. I'll do, it, uh, I'll do it one more time. This time I'll use a leg grip, a grip on the leg as a finish. You guys can just see the contrast. But once again, face this way, Ant. So we're here. We would be laying on the choking side. But for now, I want to sit just like so, so you guys can see, see the work. Let's, let's go like this. All right? We'd be on the choking side normally, but I'm going to let you guys see how I'm working here. I trap the arms with the straight jacket. I start getting the lapel and I use a two-on-one lapel feed to take the slack out of the first lapel. I use the biting method, making sure I can see my own index knuckle, making sure that the lapel lays flat against his chest. From here, I'd still like to go, I mean you could do the wrist flick without the control hand, set on the far lapel, 
but I prefer this. I, I really do. I just I love this grip right here. So I always go here. I always do. I use my ability to take the slack out of the lapel to flick his chin over the wrist. All right. So I'm trying to push his chin kind of sideways, flicking it. The wrist flick to set the lapel. Now again. This is where I start opening up my right leg, sitting on my butt and letting him fall in between me, casting my right leg here over the shoulder, letting him fall between my knees. I cross my ankles. Now, as he's defending, if I want, if these knees are up to his chest, if he's contracting things in, it usually becomes very easy for me to take a grip right here on the outside of the knee, on the outside of the knee pants. I can pull on the knee as I, again, lean my body weight off of my right hand. If you're putting body weight on the hand and you realize you forgot to hide your pinky and your pinky starts to hurt as you're putting the pressure on, just let the pinky go. Okay, just raise the pinky so you don't have to deal with the stress of your, of your pinky knuckles feeling like they're going to be dislocated or broken. Okay, so release that pinky if you feel any pressure on it. And then I lean back to put the, the choke on. As I lean back and put the choke on, I want to keep my right elbow tight to my body. If my right elbow flares, Ant can slip his head out from underneath. A savvy person may even reach back with their hand and grab my elbow and work to pull my elbow open to slip his head free. So it's very important that I take my right elbow and I pinch my right elbow into my right hip. Now when Ant tries to reach up and grab and pulls my elbow open, it's very difficult from the time available, and all I need to do to put him to sleep is lean my body weight back and hang my body weight off of this lapel that's around his neck. Thanks for a very tight choke, one of the strongest in the sport of jiu-jitsu, in the sport of gi jiu jitsu So there's a... a interesting problem when we try to put this on from the choking side and that's that my the, I can't unweight the proper leg let's go back to the control side and look at how from this position I do everything so I'll, I'll, I'll go through the steps again for repetition because it's good for you guys to hear these more I think so I trap let's rotate so you see that a little bit Two on one lapel feed, laying the lapel flat against his chest so the thin edge of the lapel points in towards his chin. I take my pinky in behind the lapel so my pinky isn't a liability. I'm going to use my wrist to flick his chin over the lapel and I set the lapel. My control hand goes to the other lapel and we're ready to choke. Now, notice that from right here, the leg that I have to cast over the shoulder so that I can use my leg to push and drive him into the choke is on top. It's unweighted. That's the benefit of the choke, by the way, guys. If I'm here and I hang my weight off of this, I don't get the same leverage as when I have this leg over the shoulder and I use my leg to physically push him into the choke. Okay? So from here, my right leg can easily cast over the shoulder. So let's set this up from the choking side now. When I'm here, I set my grips. I need my right leg over his shoulder, but it's pinned underneath of our body weight. So how do we make the, the choke work from the choking side? Well, let me show you. Let's move a little bit more center here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to kick you off. I, mean, I think we're good. I'll be back a little bit. All right. So we're here, we're laying on the choking side. I use a two-on-one lapel feed, and I use the fighting method to get that lapel set perfectly. I take my pinky, I hide it in behind the lapel to make sure it's not a liability. From here, I grab the far side lapel, and I'm ready to, to go to work. And from here, he's tucking his chin. I'm gonna flick. And look at how I tuck the chin, or sorry, the lapel under the chin from here. Look at how I have to get up on my elbow. So I'm here, he's got that chin turn. 
I'm going to try to flip my wrist, and look how I get up on my right elbow from here in order to set the, the lapel tight underneath the neck. Now I need to get my right leg back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my top leg, making a hook underneath his hips. I lay my right leg flat so there's nothing blocking him from going over. And I use this left butterfly hook behind his hip to extract my bottom leg. From here, I keep my shoulder behind the head. If my shoulder's not behind the head, he gets his head to the floor, and he's out. So my shoulder stays shrugged forward behind the head. Now I can climb up to a mount position. I cast my left leg over the body, and now we're ready to go into the choke. You've got a couple good options from here. I could try to cast my leg all the way over the shoulder, like so. And now I can cross my ankles, lean back, and put the choke on. But you'll notice that wasn't the most stable option. You'll notice that it took some flexibility, some timing, and a bit of explosion to get that. So let's look at a couple easier options. Another great option is for me to take my right knee off the floor, and I put my right knee right here behind his head. Now I'm going to sit to my butt, and as I lean my body weight back, I use my right knee to drive him into the choke, and we have a nice tight variation of the sliding collar choke. I get here, knee up behind the head, I sit, and I push. Another option is for me to take my knee, my right knee, and behind the bottom shoulder. I sit and I push my knee against the bottom shoulder. If, as I push my knee against the bottom shoulder, he starts to bridge his shoulders up and explode it, I can extend my leg and I can cross it right back over the shoulder like it was before, like when we first started doing these techniques. Now to finish, I take the slack out of the lapels, I lead my body weight back, and we have our choke. So that's how we apply the sliding collar choke from the choking side. I'll show it one more time from the top. You didn't go and saw the entry points. So we're here, and my partner, or me, has pushed the action to the choking side. From here, I set my grip using the biting method. I find the bar lapel. Now I'm gonna to try to use my chin I'm sorry, not my chin, my wrist, to move his chin. So he's going to tuck his chin, and I'm going to try to use my wrist to set the lapel underneath the neck as I come up to my right elbow. Okay? It, at this time, I realized I still have my pinky in the grip, so I'm going to go ahead and take my pinky out, put it behind. Now from here, I need to